Social experiment time. Good morning, Meshack. It is Thursday, June 1st, and in your last video, you discussed movie critics. And I consider myself something of a poetry critic, and even more of an AI critic. Not because I have anything against AI, but because I think it's an interesting thing that's emerging, and I like to look at its work and think about it. So this week, when I had a lovely poem sent to me, I stopped and I thought, hey, could ChatGPT or Bard write a poem this good? And so I typed into both of those chats, Please write me a poem in the style of person who wrote the poem that I'm going to read to you in this video. And what I got back was, in my humble opinion, absolute drivel. I compared both of the AI results to the actually human written poem, and I thought there was a very clear winner. And I also thought, if I hadn't read any of these poems, I could definitely tell that this third one was written by a human, which is not something that I thought when I was first playing with these bots. One of the things that was so impressive about ChatGPT when it first came out is that it gave responses that, you know, seemed indistinguishable from human responses. But I don't know if it's me that's changed or if it's the language model that's changed, like if they've put more restrictions on it so it is, you know, less likely to give you instructions for a bomb but also less likely to give you natural responses. Or maybe it's just my perception, but I think I've got these bots figured out. And they're a little bit different, but they use particular types of language and they use it in certain ways where you can just kind of tell now if something is written by an AI. It's a little bit better than Uncanny Valley, like it's a little bit harder to distinguish than something that feels distinctly off, but something still feels slightly off. But here's the thing, I had the benefit of hindsight. I went to these AIs and I asked them for something and I got it back and I was like, oh, psh, if I had seen this, without context, I would have known. So today, I want to figure out if that's true. I want to figure out if you can distinguish between AI written poetry and human written poetry. So without further ado, I'm about to read you three poems. Two of them are going to be written by AI, and one of them is going to be written by an actual poet. And I want you guys to comment down below which ones you think were written by the AI, and which one you think was written by the actual poet. Unless, of course, you already know the poem written by the actual human that I'm reading, in which case, don't spoil it for everyone, be a good sport. Poem number one, Whispers of Everyday Enchantment. In the quiet corners of every day, where time stretches like a lazy cat, I find solace in the simplest of things, like the humming of a tea kettle's whistle, or the rhythm of raindrops on the window pane. There is beauty in the mundane, in the way a spoon stirs honey into hot tea, in the way a book gently settles into my hands, and in the way a sunbeam sneaks through the blinds, painting the pattern on the worn wooden floor. I am drawn to the unnoticed moments, the ones that pass like fleeting whispers, like soft exhales of a sleeping lover, or the gentle rustling of leaves in a forgotten, forgotten garden. These moments, they hold a magic all their own. And as I wander through the labyrinth of existence, I stumble upon fragments of wonder, like a forgotten memory slowly awakening, or a cloud taking shape against a summer sky, dancing with the wind's invisible hand. For in the ordinary lies the extraordinary, and in the overlooked lies the profound. It is there that life unfurls its hidden treasures, like secrets whispered between old friends, or laughter spilling over in unabashed joy. So let us not overlook the small miracles, the ones that bloom quietly in our midst, for it is in these moments, my friend, that the world becomes an enchanting place, and our hearts find solace in the poetry of life. Poem number two is titled, The Chairs That No One Sits In. You see them on porches and on lawns down by the lakeside, usually arranged in pairs implying a couple, who might sit there and look out at the water or the big shade trees. The trouble is you never see anyone sitting in these forlorn chairs, although at one time it must have seemed a good place to stop and do nothing for a while. Sometimes there is a table between the chairs where no one is resting a glass or placing a book face down. It might be none of my business, but it might be a good idea one day for everyone who placed those vacant chairs on a veranda or a dock to sit down in them for the sake of remembering whatever it was they thought deserved to be viewed from two chairs side by side with a table in between. The clouds are high and massive that day, 
The woman looks up from her book. The man takes a sip of his drink. Then there is nothing but the sound of their looking, the lapping of lake water, and a call of one bird, then another, cries of joy or warning. It passes the time to wonder which. And poem number three, last but not least, is titled The Ode to the Ordinary. Oh, the ordinary, how it fills me with awe, the simplest thing in life, the ones we take for granted, the ones we walk past without a second glance. A blade of grass, a bird in flight, a cloudless sky, a gentle breeze. These are the things that make life worth living. These are the things that bring us joy. So next time you're feeling down, take a moment to appreciate the ordinary. Look around you and see all the beauty that surrounds you. The ordinary is often overlooked, but it is the most precious thing of all. So let us celebrate the ordinary and let us never take it for granted. Okay, awesome. That is all three poems. I hope I did a relatively unbiased reading of them. I was really trying to give everything uh, the best shot that I could possibly get. If my intonation gave something away, I am sorry, but I did read them as they were written, so that might be part of the way that you found out how the poems were written, right? Like, part of the artistry of poetry is spacing the words and punctuating the words such that someone can read them in the way that they are intended to be read, or whatever. Now it is your turn to participate. I want you to go into the comment section down below, and I want you to write one, two, three, and I want you to write either AI or human next to one, two, and three. Like I said, I think this is obvious, but I guess we're about to find out. All right, got your guesses in? If not, here's your final chance. Pause the video. Perfect. Great. Now I'm going to tell you the actual truth. And here it is. No, seriously, I'm looking at you. Put your guesses in. Okay, now seriously, the actual results. Poem number one, titled Whispers of Everyday Enchantment, should have been a dead giveaway right from the title. That was written by AI. Let me know if there was ever a more cringy title to a poem. Whispers of Everyday Enchantment. Sounds like something that a fifth grader would come up with. I know, because I wrote poetry when I was in fifth grade. This one actually started out pretty strong. In the quiet corners of every day, where time stretches like a lazy cat, is kind of nice. One thing you'll find with these AIs, they rely heavily on frequently used bits of language. Things like, I am drawn to the unnoticed moments, fleeting whispers, soft exhales. Like, these are all little punchy things that clearly chat GPT has seen a million times. Oh right, if I didn't mention it, that was chat GPT's version of the poem, so not just any AI, this is the big, this is the big bad, this is chat GPT. Poem number two, The Chairs That No One Sits In, was written by a human. This was written by Billy Collins, uh, that is the prompt that I gave to both uh, Bard and ChatGPT. I said write a poem in the style of Billy Collins because I thought this second poem is absolutely gorgeous. You should go check it out for yourself because I kind of botched the reading a little bit. Um, it's so beautiful and it captures I think a very human experience. But of course, that means that poem number three, The Ode to the Ordinary, was written by an AI. And boy, oh boy, was this an embarrassment for Google. I'm a big fan of Google, but this bard experiment is nowhere near as good as ChatGPT, in my humble opinion. It's good at and better at some other stuff, but at least when it comes to poetry, this is this is not good. Oh, the ordinary, how it fills me with awe, is the first line in the Ode to the Ordinary. It's also not at all in the style of Billy Collins. This one, this one was really bad in my opinion. It also didn't include any rhyming or any meter. It was just kind of word vomited out everything, every like generic thing that came to mind about acknowledging ordinary things. The ordinary is often overlooked, but it is the most precious thing of all. So let us celebrate the ordinary, and let us never take it for granted, is how this poem ends, which is like, what? So, how did you do? Are you surprised by these results? Let me know. Now, I said that I thought these results were obvious. I think poem number three can be almost completely thrown out. If you guessed number three was the one written by a human, tell me why. But poem number one, like, I can, I can see how you thought a person wrote that. But the thing about 
the the chairs that no one sits in is that it is reflective of a human experience ai art can be visually stunning or it can be you know compelling when written really well but it is not representative of a human experience right because ai doesn't have human experience to draw from that must have seemed like a good place to stop and do nothing for a while i feel like that is insight about the human thought process that ChatGPT and Bard Google just don't have yet. Or for example, when Billy Collins prefaces one of his stanzas with, it might be none of my business, but it might be a good idea, you know, blah, blah, blah. That is a human touch, a like social acknowledgement that feels appropriate at that part in the poem. So a challenge to the programmers behind these AIs, because I, I do want to see these problems solved. I want to see a world where AI can really convince me that it's a human written poem. The challenge to the programmers is how do you build in not just knowing what the next word could be, but how do you build in what the next word could be to convey an idea that is compelling to humans. Right, I don't want to get too technical, but right now these uh, AI architectures are built around what is the likely next word. That's all it's doing. It's going word, 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 word. Okay, we have this set of data. What is the likely next word? But when you have an objective to make someone feel based on a prompt and then all of the words are coming from that objective rather than just like question and then continue the string, this is the answer. Those are two different processes. AI, at least in my opinion, cannot convincingly portray a human experience yet. So poets of the world, if you're as good as Billy Collins, I think your job is safe. If you're writing anything like that barred Google poem, less so. But with that being said, I think that's all I've got for you guys today. Your advice for today is to go find a human written poem and share it with us in the comment section down below. I do want to hear all your thoughts about this, so as you're looking up a different poem, let me know also if you thought that these poems were compelling and I was totally wrong, or if you agree and that it was very obvious which poem stood out as the human written one. Whatever the case, I love you guys very much, and Meshach, Schmackers, I will see you next week.